Howdy y'all, I'm Jason. Let's go to Tractor Supply and see what we can find. Ultimately, I decided to split this into two chapters because there was so much stuff online that I thought you guys should see. So let's go ahead and start off with that. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start off with an actual rooftop tent. This is a trust made uh, rooftop tent and a couple companies carry this, but uh, Tractor Supply has it and you can order it to store. Um, it comes in a bunch of different colors. It's a two person tent and it's very similar to some early roof nest rooftop tents. For $2,000, I know that might seem like a lot of money to some people, but considering that a lot of rooftop tents can run up to $4,000 or so, this actually isn't such a bad deal. I actually talked to someone online who has this tent and he seems to like it. He gave it a four out of five when I talked to him, which is pretty good for a budget rooftop tent. Um, you know, there's obviously going to be some downsides to a budget one, but yeah, I mean, ultimately I think this is a pretty good deal and I will link that video below so you can check it out. So for this next part, we have two truck bed tents. Now this is kind of a happy medium between a full rooftop tent and a ground tent. It's going to run you about $200, which is maybe on the more expensive end for a regular tent, but certainly much cheaper than a rooftop tent. Uh, this is a two person tent and at the highest point it is five feet. So you're not gonna be able to stand up in it, but you'll be able to kind of lean over and you know get a little bit of room in there. The thing to look out for is to make sure that you measure your bed because um, they have different sizes for different beds. There's also a little bit more popular one, the right line two person tent. This one's a little bit more popular, so I'm sure you've probably seen this one before if you've looked into truck bed tents. Make sure to measure your bed to make sure that you get the right size for your truck. So the next thing we're gonna be looking at is this uh, camping cot tent. So if you're someone that has a tent and you sleep with a cot in it, this is gonna be very similar. They have a one person and a two person version. And after being in the one person, I would actually recommend going with the two person. You just have a little bit more room and it's only about 50 bucks more. Um, I've talked to a lot of people who own these and I'm getting very, very mixed reviews. Look and do your own research because people seem to either love this thing or hate it. Um, it's gonna get you off the ground, but it's not gonna put you up high like a rooftop tent. Speaking of, there's actually this guy online, I'll link his video below, that he just put it on his truck bed and basically turned it into a budget rooftop tent. So this next product is also a trust made product. This is a six and a half foot by six and a half foot awning. This is very, very similar to my Yescom, which is an Amazon one. Um, looking at these pictures, it looks almost exactly like it. I wouldn't be surprised if it was made from the same factory in China, but you know, with awnings, you're going to get what you pay for. Um, this is good for, you know, light rain, stuff like that. Maybe a good place for shade, which is about what I would say with my awning because I had it in heavy hail and rain and it started sagging. So I would imagine that this is pretty similar to that one because, because it looks just like it and it's made from the exact same materials. So they actually have quite a few sleeping bags, but I went through and just did some research and found what I think is the best ones on here. So the first one we're gonna talk about is this Coleman. Um, it's a big and tall, so it's gonna be a little bit bigger, but I kind of like that for sleeping. I'm, I like the space. This is a 30 degree sleeping bag and it's actually rated pretty high. 30 degree does not mean it's gonna be super comfortable in 30 degrees. It's basically saying that you will survive in 30 degree weather. The last one is going to be this negative five sleeping bag. I also, again, picked the tall sleeping bag because, you know, a negative five, it's probably going to be pretty big, but if you're going to be sleeping down in that cold, it's really just important that you get a bag that's rated much below what weather you're going to be in. From every review I saw online, this one is pretty good. And I've talked to some people that own this one and they seem to really like it. So this might be a good option for you. Now this next one's gonna be great, especially if you sleep in a ground tent. I actually use these in my rooftop tent just for a little bit extra padding, but um, 
But yeah, I've had these for years and they're really nice. They pack down really tight. This is a one and a half inch thick. Um, I think mine is a little bit thicker than that, but I also used to own a one and a half inch and I do have one as well. I think if I was buying one, I would actually go with a little bit thicker, but this was the best one on their site and it probably will be fine for you, especially if you're gonna be sleeping on a cot or a inside of a rooftop tent. Now this one's especially important if you live in a very dry area like I do. We have wildfires and fire bans all the time. So during those months, we actually use a propane fire pit. It's kind of nice because you won't smell like smoke. Yeah, you don't have to worry about starting a forest fire or something like that because you can just cut off the propane. Now this is 5,800 BTU, so there's a good chance you're gonna burn through these propane bottles pretty quickly. It's 19 inch diameter and you have a hose so that you can run it off of a five pound or maybe even a 20 pound propane tank. So this one here, I believe is actually the exact same one that I have, although in the photos, it shows a, a different clip to it. So I'm not really sure this kind of clipping thing here, um, but it looks just like mine other than that. And I do have a Coleman, so it's likely that this is the exact same one, if not an upgraded version, but I really like this. It's great, it packs down really tight. And yeah, it's great for camping because I can prepare food on it or set down drinks or food or snacks or anything like that. It's really lightweight as well. So yeah, I think it's an all around pretty great uh, addition to your setup. So this Royal Gourmet uh, griddle is very similar to my Blackstone that I just picked up. I believe it's actually the same size griddle, but the you can see over here on the side, it actually sticks out quite a bit. So this is why I didn't go with this one. But yeah, I really like griddles. Um, I've always used cast iron and I would usually just throw the cast iron in the fire. But I decided finally after buying a larger Blackstone that it was time to try out maybe these little ones because I kept seeing them. But I really like it so far and it's really easy to use. Um, it is a little bit big so just kind of know that if you're tight on space maybe look into something else. But if you have the space maybe something like this could work out for you. So this one actually is kind of near and dear to me because this is what my dad had when I was growing up. And I don't know, maybe I just have a sense of nostalgia about it, but something about the propane lanterns, just, I don't know, I really like it. But yeah, it's it's a thousand lumens and it's kind of cool. It runs for 17 hours off of one little propane tank. So, so it's actually very efficient. So this little pocket EDC kind of light here is only a hundred lumens, um, which isn't a lot, but it would be kind of nice to keep as an EDC thing or maybe like up front in your dash, something you could grab pretty quickly, but it was pretty highly rated. So I went ahead and included it anyway. But what I really want to talk about is this one here and the next one, this is a thousand lumens for only $10, so uh, I would recommend getting this one and I actually think I will get this one. So a thousand lumens is a lot. You can shoot this beam for almost 400 feet and for $9, I'm not really sure where the uh, corner cutting is there because that's a lot of lumens for not a lot of money. And then there's also this one for $20, you get 2000 lumens. Now, I don't know anyone personally that owns this one and it's actually not rated online. So it's really hard to say if this is any good, but for $20 and 2000 lumens, it might be worth it to take a risk on this one. If you guys want me to try out either the thousand lumen or the 2000 lumen, let me know below and maybe I'll test it out in a video. So this is a 250 lumen headlamp, which isn't crazy high, but, but I would say it's pretty good. I mean, I think this thing looks incredibly goofy. Um, looks like some kind of miners thing, but uh, but yeah, I mean, if it does the job, then who really cares? Uh, this is really great for walking around camp because you know sometimes I'm walking around camp with an ax in my hand or something like that, and I don't want to be holding a flashlight in one hand. So I would almost always recommend getting a headlamp. This is only fourteen dollars, so it's not going to break the bank, and you'll basically get everything you need out of just that. 
There are some other ones here as well as some that I saw in store. But yeah, I think this one's a pretty good bang for the buck. Now there were a few knives I looked at while I was there um, and also these ones that I saw only online. But of the three I saw, I really liked these two. This one was $12 and it was pretty decently rated. Um, it's gonna be a pretty basic knife, nothing too crazy. There's a bunch of other ones like this one as well. Um, I didn't really see this one in store and I, I didn't really see much about it online, but it was pretty highly rated as well. Um, I like this one maybe even a little bit better pretty quick to get out. And like I said, it's pretty highly rated. So I think this might actually be the way to go over the last one. So my favorite of all these is this one right here. I like this one a lot. It's kind of cool. Maybe something to keep on your belt or like I would probably keep something like this in my drawer system and maybe use it around cooking or something like that. It's pretty small and it has a sheath with it. So yeah, I don't know. I like this one a lot. So this next one's gonna be really great if you are doing like the full time kind of thing or maybe van life, but it is basically a warm water tank that is also a shower. I'm not saying I would use something like this, but, but like I said, if you're doing full time or something like that, this might actually be good. They actually carry a surprising amount of camp showers and they've got two different sizes for this product. They have a five liter and also a 10 liter as well. So this Fiskars here is a chopping ax. This is a really good ax that I actually use myself. Um, I just have it mounted to the side of my truck and it's really great. I really like it. It's, it's very well priced. You can also get the splitting ax, which is really good for splitting stuff, but it's a lot more expensive. It's a lot heavier and you can kind of still split with the chopping ax. And also personally, I've just found that I get a lot more use out of the chopping ax. Now I know I've mentioned this one in a lot of my videos, but I love cast iron. Uh, the lodge is what I have. And it's also what I would recommend as well. Um, they come pre-seasoned. So if you don't know how to season them, um, this is a really good intro one. But yeah, this is what I used to use. I would just put it on the fire and let it cook. I've actually switched to a Blackstone recently. I'll have a video on that soon, but this is a really good way to start cooking at camp and you can also use it in your home as well. So something I also use a lot of are these little propane tanks. I run my fire pit off of them, my grill, and in the winter I run my buddy heater off of them. If I don't use that, I might end up using this hose here to connect my um, larger one, which they actually sell as well. So basically you've got two different ways to run your heater or anything like that. And um, it's all in one location. So I've actually switched to a fridge, but when I had a cooler, I had something pretty similar to this, but it was a lot more expensive. Now, just be aware this was on clearance, so that could mean that they might stop carrying this, but it closes very similar to how my Yeti did with the rubber handles. And yeah, it's a little bit bigger. Now, if you're gonna go with a cooler, something like this would actually be a lot better. You can use some old Coleman or something like that, but the lid not latching kind of just worries me, especially for off-roading. Now these are really cool for so many different functions in, uh, for camping. I just kind of like use it to wrap some gear. You can keep things closed with it. They have a bunch of different sizes. Even if you don't get this at Tractor Supply, you can find it anywhere. And it's just really great for organizing. And I think you guys will really like it. Another thing that they carry is some paracord. They've got it pretty much in a bunch of different colors. This is 550 paracord. You can wrap knives with it and stuff like that, or you know, make something out of it so that you have it at all points in time. But it's really great for multi-purposes out in the woods. The black is pretty good, but I would actually recommend going with this orange one personally, just because if you're really gonna be out in the dark a lot or in an area that's pretty green, I would say go with this orange one because you're gonna be able to see it pretty quickly. So this one doesn't have the most lumens out there, it's a 400, which is a pretty good happy medium. It's got three modes, so you can go from 
that 400 to 120 as well. Very utilitarian, not, not made for aesthetics, but I think this will be a pretty good one for you. All right, so this one's a little bit cheaper and it's 350. It's honestly not that much cheaper. So if you like the first one, maybe go with that one but it's 350 lumens. It's, you know, pretty decent, pretty in the middle, but this one has a lifetime guarantee. So um, you could go back to Tractor Supply and return it if it doesn't work out for you or if something goes wrong. I'd feel pretty safe buying it. I know we talked a lot about the lights in the online one, but here's one in store. This is 600 lumens. It's a pretty powerful light. It's got four hours of runtime, a 700 foot beam, and also it is also going to have this lifetime warranty. So that's really good. All right, we've also got this pretty big one here. This is a 1000 lumen. It's a lot bigger, um, maybe it doesn't show up on camera, but it's a lot bigger. And then we've also got this 1800 lumen one, which is about the same size, but this thing is an absolute monster. That's like a set of ditch pods or something. So I thought these were cool. These are only 300 lumens, which is probably just fine for most uses. And it's only seven bucks. Now I'm not the hugest fan of these canopies, but if you don't have an awning or anything like that, this was actually a pretty good option. They do kind of take up a lot of space when they're folded down, pretty mid range in price. And if you are out somewhere in the desert or if you're trying to avoid rain, this is actually not a bad option for you. Now, one thing I do really like is this hammock chair. I have one very similar to it and I really like, this one can hold up to 300 pounds, which is more than enough. It's super comfortable and you don't really have to be as level for this to be comfortable. This one's pretty cool for recovery and it's only $35. I don't know how well this will hold up, but it's kind of cool that it rolls up so you can set it inside. I would personally just want something with a little bit of stiffness to it, kind of like my traction boards that I got from Vic Off-Road. But yeah, if you're low on space and you want something pretty cheap, maybe these will work out for you. I would just say spend a little bit more money and get something a lot better. As far as winches go, they had two winches, one that was 12,000 pounds and another that was 10, but both were steel and I just really don't like the steel cable. Maybe you could change it out. I would rather go with one of these ones that they have online here. This one's 10,000, which is, you know, enough for my forerunner. Maybe it's not enough for yours, but, but yeah, I would much rather go with this synthetic one than the other ones. We've also got your uh, standard shackle here. This one's rated for 10,000 pounds. It's not painted or anything like that. It's just, you know, metal. If you need one for nine bucks, this should probably work out for you. I have one very similar to this on the back of my vehicle and also on my bumper as well. So we've also got a 17,000 pound uh, toe strap. Um, it's pretty obvious what this is for, so just make sure that you get the highest one that is gonna work for your vehicle. We've also got this tree saver, which is really great. I try to use these every time I winch. I even have one of these and I've tested it before and it works really great. I've also got the high lift or farm jack. Now I have one from Vic Off Road and I really like mine, but I spent a ton of time researching how to use it correctly before I actually started using it. All right, so let's get into lights. We've got this pod here that would be good for a ditch light for $70. It's got a thousand lumens. We've also got this one for 29. That's got 1800 lumens, but this is just the single one. And then we've got, also got a 560 lumen one, which I would just probably not go for. Um, I would go with one of the four ones. So we've also got a two pack of this side shooting one that's 1400 lumens. This looks a lot like the Cali Rays to me and it's got pretty similar output. So we've also got this one that's 4300 lumens, which is really a lot of light output. This isn't really my style. I don't know exactly where you'd mount this, but if you have a place you could mount something like this, maybe above your bumper or above your vehicle, then this is a good option. Now this one's pretty wild. It's 7,800 lumens in a 30 inch light bar. That's the same that you're getting out of this 50 inch one down here. And this is just a single row. Basically the same thing I have in my bumper. So the last one we have here is this metal gas can. Now these are mountable and they've got the jerry cam design on them. 
But these are really great to have for auxiliary fuel on your trips. 